It's hello from me, Henry, and Nipper. Now before I narrate this bedtime story, don't you think Nipper looks beautiful in her unicorn outfit and a lovely hoodie look and matching boots? The story this evening is called The Little Red Riding Hood and we all snuggled in then. Let's get ready, then so we shall begin. In a great wild forest, full of beautiful trees and green glades and thorny thickets, there lived a long time ago a woodcutter and his wife, who had only one child, a little girl. She was very pretty and so good that the sun seemed to shine more brightly when its light fell upon her rosy little face and the birds would seem to sing much more sweetly when she was passing by. Her real name was Maisie, but the neighbours around here also called her Little Red Riding Hood because of the scarlet riding hood and cloak that her kind old grandmother had made for her and which she nearly always wore. She was such a happy, merry little child with a smile and a gentle word for everybody and so you can easily believe that everybody loved her. And she was glad to catch a glimpse of her golden curls and her scarlet cloak as she tripped along singing under the green boughs. Now this, let me tell you before I forget, was at a time when all the birds and the beasties, or very nearly all of them, could speak just as well as you or I, and nobody was surprised to hear them talk, as I suppose one would be nowadays. Well, as I was saying, Little Red Riding Hood with her parents and a little white cottage with a green door and thatch roof with red and white roses climbing all over the walls and even putting their pretty heads in at the lattice window to peep at the child who was so like them. It was on a bright spring morning early in May when Little Red Riding Hood I just finished putting away the breakfast cups that her mother came bursting in from the dairy. Here's a to-do list, she said. Farmer Hodge has very this minute told me he hears your granny isn't very well. I can't leave the cheese making this morning for love no money. Do you go, my dear, and find out how she is and steer. Take her this little pot of sweet fresh butter and those two newly laid eggs and these nice tasty little pastries. Maybe they'll tempt. They'll attempt her to eat a little bit. Here's your basket and don't be too long away. Bye bye, honey. So Little Red Riding Hood pulled over her hood over her curls and set off down the sunny green slopes with her basket in hand and a brisk pace in her step. But as she got deeper into the forest, she walked more slowly. Everything was so beautiful. The great trees waved their huge arms over her. The birds were calling to one another from the thorns, all white with blossom. And the child began singing as she went. She could not have told why, but I think it was because the beautiful world made her feel glad. The path wound along through the trees and it grew wider after turning a corner. Red Riding Hood saw that she was likely to have company on her walk. For where the two cross paths divided, there sat a big grey wolf licking his paws and looking sharply about him. Good morning Riding Hood, he said. Oh dear, good morning Mr Wolf, she answered. 
And where may you be going, sweet guide? Said the wolf as you walk beside her. Oh, granny, my granny isn't very well. And mother can't leave the cheese making this morning. And so I'm taking her some little dainties in my basket. And I am to see how she is. And tell mother when I get back, said the child with a big smile. And, said the wolf, where does your grandma live, little lady? Through the crops, and down the hollow, and over the bridge, and three meadows after the mill. Do she indeed, cried he. Why then, I do believe she is a very dear old friend of mine, whom I have not seen for years and years. Now I tell you what we will do. You and I will go by the way, and you shall take that road, and whoever gets there first shall be the winner of this game. So the wolf trotted on one way, and Red Riding Hood went the other, and I'm sorry to say she lingered and loitered more than she ought to have done on this road. Well, what was one thing and another, the sun was right up in the very midmost middle of the sky when she crossed the last meadow from the mill and came in sight of her grandmother's cottage and the big lilac bushes that grew by the garden gate. Oh dear, how I must have lingered, she thought, when she saw how high the sun had climbed since she set off on her journey and pattering up the garden path, she tapped on the cottage door. Who's there? said a very gruff kind of voice from inside. It's only I, Granny dear. Your little red riding hood with some goodies for you in my basket, answered the child. Then pull the bob and cry the wolf and the latch will go up. What a dreadful cold poor granny must have, to be sure, to make so hoarse a thought, the child. She then pulled the bobbin and the latch went up, and Red Riding Hood pushed open the door and stepped inside. It seemed very dark in there after the bright sunlight outside, and all Red Riding Hood could see was the window curtains and the bed curtains they were still drawn, and her grandmother seemed to be lying in bed with bedclothes pulled almost over her head, and her grey white frilled nightcap nearly hiding her face. Now, you and I have guessed it by this time, although poor Red Riding Hood never even thought of such a thing, that it was not her granny at all, but the wicked wolf who had hurried to the cottage and put on Granny's nightcap and popped into her bed to pretend he was Granny himself. And where was Granny this time, you see? Well, we shall see presently. Come on, sit down beside my bed, dearie, wheeze the wolf, and let us have a little chat. Then the wolf stretched out his large hairy paws and began to unfasten the basket. Oh, said Riding Road, what great arms you have, Granny. Oh, they better to hug you with, said the wolf. And what great roofies you have, Granny. Oh, they better to hear you with, my little dear. And your eyes, Granny, what great big yellow eyes you have. Oh, they better to see you with, my pet, grinned the wolf. And, oh dear Granny, cried the child in sad fright, what great sharp teeth you have. All the better to eat you with, growled the wolf, springing up suddenly at Red Riding Hood. But just all that very moment, the door flew open, and two tall wool cutters rushed in with their heavy axes and killed the wicked wolf in far less time than it takes me to tell you about it. But where is Granny? asked the little Red Riding Hood, when she had thanked the brave woodcutters. Ooh, where can poor Granny be? 
Kan jag klova vår för vina upp? She began to cry so bitterly. Well, who should walk in but Granny herself, as large as life and hearty as ever, with her marking, marketing basket on her arm. For it was another old dame in the village who was not very well, and Granny had been down to visit her and give her some of her own famous herb tea. So everything turned out right in the end. All lived happy ever after, but I promise you that Little Red Riding Hood never made friends with the wolf again. Okay then, children. Nighty-night. Good night.